All right, I'm Thunder. You're watching Thunder Acres. Today, we're gonna to give you the nuts and bolts of a monster truck. I've been in the business for 20, 30 years. We're gonna go over how I got started and how I built two monster trucks. My first one and the latest piece, Thunder 4x4. We started out with Rolling Thunder. But we're gonna go over in detail, it'll be a pretty long video, my longest yet, and the nuts and bolts of it, how it was built, the ins and outs, how I got started. So, we're gonna go back to 1980 when they first debuted Bigfoot, and when I seen them on TV, I was hooked. I knew right then and there, I told myself, I'm building and driving a monster truck. Well, back when I was 18, I had no money, no shop, so, what did I do for 18 years later? Let's speed fast forward to 1998, and there I got my own shop. I had a salvage yard business, had a few bucks, so we started building. But, let's go back to the old Metrodome days, and what I did in the pit parties, and my first chassis here. So, like I said, I couldn't get started right away. No money, no time, no shop. So, I went to the pit parties of Metrodome, followed the trucks for 18 years in the Metrodome, went to every pit party, went to every show, and when I would go to the pit parties, I wouldn't take pictures of the trucks. I would get right up there, talk to the drivers, and find out you know, how they were built. I would take pictures of frames, axles, if they had an a, a issue. Uh, after the show, I would go down after the parties, and uh, anything that broke down, I would be taking pictures of what broke down, why it broke down, how I could make mine better. So I learned a ton in the pit party. So if you're looking to get into the monster truck business, I say that pit party at the shows, you go down there, you talk to the drivers, you get a ton of knowledge in the pit parties because you're right up close and can see this stuff. So let's get started on uh, my very first chassis. This here was an awesome piece. I built it in 1998, it took me two years. We performed first in 2000. Let me show you my first ever drawing. When I was 18 years old, Nick, you just get a close up this here. I made this little drawing. I wanted a main frame. I wanted my four link bars all to be even. So this here, I saved. This thing is 37 years old, piece of paper, my first print of my frame. Let's go get a closer look. Like I said, this here was an awesome piece in uh, 2000 and 2010. Things weren't as crazy as they are now. This truck was not competitive when it got to be 2010. But going back to 2000, this here thing did an awesome job. Uh, like you can see, I made uh, the mainframe. And then it wasn't overbuilt. Uh, you can see a few rollovers I had. The new trucks, you know, are, this thing's probably got maybe 80 feet of two inch tubing in there. My new truck's probably got 200 feet of tubing, in my opinion, overbuilt. But anyway, this truck, this Fred chassis was reliable for 10 years, never gave me any trouble. You might see different welds on here. The first one was 22 inch shocks. The only reason this was all welded and you can see braced up again is because I went to 26 inch shocks. So I had to add this tower here without changing the whole frame. So, like I said, this thing was a beast. It flew through the air like an airplane. It did not yard dart like the new trucks now. In my opinion, the secret to mine, the engine I had as far back as possible. You can see it's about two feet back from the opera, the cockpit. That right there, these new modern day trucks, in my opinion, you go to Monster Jam and what are they doing? They're all yard darting. When they first came out in like 2010, these computer generated chassis that they bragged about, all they did was yard dart. Even today, these big time trucks are getting big time air. They fly through the air and they yard dart and the, truck, uh, the drivers are getting beat up. That's why you see a lot of young drivers now, the old guys are getting retired because they're all banged up. This truck, if you go back to my old videos, the old blue trucks, we'll show you a picture right here. That truck there won the freestyle in 2007 with a hefty crowd. 
in all the company trucks were there. That truck flew through the air and landed like an airplane. Did not yard dart. You can look at it, the engine is way in the back. The rolling thunder, the blue rolling thunder, that was an awesome piece, 22 inches of travel, and it landed like a pillow. Okay, like I said, this one I built, complete 100% was my design, my build, didn't have any help. Uh, two by four mainframe, 3 16 wall, two inch DOM, 1 8 wall, and that's basically my chassis. Did a great job for them 10 years. You know, back, you gotta remember back in 2000, suspensions were just coming out. Uh, they got the shit pounded out of them in the 90s. Uh, when it hit 2000, when I entered the field, uh, finally they started getting some suspension systems rather than a little old coiled spring with about 10 inches of suspension like the trucks in the 80s and 90s, and they got the shit knocked out of them. Let's go over to my new truck and we'll see day and night difference between the chassis. All right, this is my new computer generated, uh, MIG welded, uh, I think there's some TIG welded on here too, but check out the tubes. In my opinion, overbuilt. Look at, you got, I think there's over 200 feet of two inch tubing everywhere. Now this truck here, I cartwheeled in the Metrodome. Uh, I was 2013 and I believe it got crash madness of the year. I felt safe in this truck. I would not have wanted to do that to my truck. This chassis, like I said, was designed by a racer for the off-road racing. That's great. When you're racing, which I don't care about in monster trucks, nobody, no fans know if you go to the US Bank Stadium, nobody remembers who won racing. Everybody remembers who won freestyle. I don't care about racing. So anyway, this thing was built for, by a racer for off-road racing. That's a great thing. They put the engine, mid-engine design. This is gonna be the new monster truck. This is gonna be the racing, freestyle, everything. No, they put the engine too far forward. Now what happens is the truck are yard darting. The engine needs, this engine needs to come back one foot would solve the problem. Well, that's easier said than done. Now all these tubes are in the way. It's a heck of a job to move that engine back. But this thing here is a great chassis, but needs to come back one foot. Take it as a dirt bike. Uh, when anybody drove a dirt bike before, you can't, when you're jumping, you gotta save some throttle for the ramp and you can't sit in the center of the seat. When you're jumping in a dirt bike, you gotta save throttle for the ramp and you also gotta lean back. The weight's gotta be shifted or you'll nose over on a dirt bike all the time. Same thinking with a monster truck. One other thing I did not like about this new chassis is, you can see these shocks are straight up and down. They did not come like that. They came like this here. Front shocks, they can be angled. I have no problem with that there. This truck came with angled back shocks. I moved that forward, this six inches, I pushed this axle forward. In my opinion, if you angle these back shocks, they load up and they can bolt the truck over and nose dive. When this thing came out, like I said, if I had to do it over again, it's an awesome looking piece, but I would have stuck to mine and rebuilt mine and made it uh, the same thing. I would have made it same rear engine, but I would have taken and put more tubes in it because of what we do nowadays and the violent rollovers we have, to, so I felt safe. Nikki, just show them this here. You can see all the X bracing, and I just feel like incredibly safe in this truck on a violent rollover versus what I have. So I put these straight up and down because in the two years, I come out of retirement, I actually went through a divorce, so I shut it down between 2010, 2011. When I came out and built this truck in 2012, uh, all this did was yard dart. It kicked the shit out of me. All I would do is nose over, and all these new trucks were doing the same thing. I couldn't get any help. Nobody knew what to do to correct the problem. So that's what I decided. Straight up and down shocks, and I pushed this forward, helped the problem out. But like I said, I still suffered for two years. These shocks were extremely fussy to adjust. And my old truck, you had some tolerances. This stuff here, if you ain't exactly perfect on all your pressure setting, 
uh, spring weight. This thing is yard guarding. It still always lands front end first, which I don't like, but with all these new trucks, with the center engine, you watch Monster Jam, they're all nosing over and the big jumps there are yard darting. So it took me two years to get this thing to land halfway as decent. This thing will jump 35 feet in the air over the top of a house, you know, and have a safe landing, but it is still not what it would be if that engine was moved back one foot and landed back end first, just like an airplane landing. That's the way it should work. Okay, chassis was chapter one. Chapter two is gonna be my axles. To me, there is no better axle in the business out there on a competitive monster truck than what I run on Thunder 4x4. It's a Soma axle made out of France. It was only made like from 1975 to maybe 1990, and then they discontinued it. But I am the only, correct me if I'm wrong, but I can, I can tell you that I'm the only monster truck on the planet that, in my opinion, that broke one spindle in my entire career of 700 shells. If you watch on the crazy guys on, on Monster Jam, they're breaking wheels off left and right. Yes, they do crazier stuff, but I can guarantee if you look, watch my clips, we are 35 feet in the air when we did the 2015 tour, and these axles took a beating, and we gave it some big time air. Finally, let, I'm gonna let out the secret of my axle. Nikki, come over here. And just get a good view of this here. The secret to my don't turn the thing. The secret to my axles, all axles, you have this flange here, this knuckle here, and uh, it bolts to, on the outside. Your spindle, my axles, that spindle comes through the back side and bolts on the back side. Now you have an extra inch and a quarter in here for that spindle to flex. That's why I never lost a wheel besides one time in 700 shows is because it has inch, inch and a half to give. Everything that you build has to have, uh, be able to give. Even the skyscrapers are not, uh, they'll flex. Everything has to flex or it'll snap off. Uh, even in a skyscraper, that building on a windy day will move six, seven feet on the top side. Everything has to flex. That is the secret of why these Soma axles are badass and, and the lightweight. And in my opinion, uh, you could drop this thing from 100 feet and this thing would stand up. So that's the secret of the Thunder 4x4 axle. Then we also took and if you come back to our steering cylinders, we went to an inch and a quarter ram because the ones that were on there were only three quarter and I was bending them all. So we updated cylinders. But, Soma axle, badass for a Monster Jam truck. Okay, just to wrap up my axle, the only other thing that I have that not a lot of trucks have because it's hard to maneuver, but I got a Detroit locker in the front, the front axle, and I also got a Detroit locker in the back. So very tough to steer. Uh, if you're on a uh, tarred or a concrete, I should say concrete floor, very tough to steer. You actually gotta punch the throttle, spin the tires to get it to steer because both front and rear are locked up. Most people have it open in the front so they can steer. I chose to go Detroit locker front and rear because we're known for the Cyclone King. So that's the axle in a nutshell. Let's move on to our shocks. In the old day, I started out, I wanted the best shocks in the business. And in my opinion, back in 2010, these were the best shocks. Three inch, 22 inches of travel. And when I came out with this baby, I lit the world on fire. The early years of 2000, this thing here, I have dialed in. King helped me out a lot. And that blue truck flew through the air. And man, them landings were just unbelievably smooth. So, then we had to update. We went to the new chassis. 22 inches of traveling much nowadays. So now we went to 26. Well, in my opinion, my 22s work perfectly. And if you get, nowadays even have 30 inch, but if you can't get them to work properly, what good is it? The more travel you have, the harder it is to fine tune them. So this badass four inch, besides the bypass, 
we got it where there's valving in the main shock as well. So this thing here is four by 26. Uh, it's got the accumulator. So when this truck lands, first thing that happens is in this piston in here, there is some uh, valving on the piston. That's adjustable. So when it lands, the piston valving opens up, allows oil to leak past. Then at the exact same time, this bypass valve here, actually the one in the back here, and you can adjust this here with a bleed screw. So I can control the amount of oil that's going past. So this here one here, you can see starts here, ends up here. So when I'm in, in uh, up in the air, axle all the way bottom, the piston is here. It's pushing oil out the bypass and around to the barrel side. So besides the piston having your leaf spring valving, you got the bypass. Then you also have this nitrogen accumulator and I fill these about 200 pounds of air. So now the oil is pushing in here, pushing on the gas. So you got three things trying to soften the landing of this truck. It took a hell of a long time to get these babies dialed in. You know, you gotta go inside, play around with the piston valving. The outside is easy. All you do is adjust these bleed screws. So that's the first stage. You come over here, when this truck is uh, down to the last 10 inches, it hits the last uh, second and third stage. All these are adjusted with the bleed screw. So you start slowly start stiffening up. When that piston gets here, it's pushing it out the last six inches. Then we go to the last eight inches of travel, and this here last bleed screw you adjust, and you want that pretty stiff so the truck don't bottom out. You don't want the piston bottoming out. So once you get that one dialed in, then you got to play around with these here springs. So we got the coil over spring to control our ride height. There again, I probably got 10 sets of springs before I had this dialed in. There again, when we're up in the air, the shock's fully extended and we're landing. This uh, soft spring here, it's a 12 inch spring, it starts to catch the truck and make it a smooth landing. Once this thing here comes to the top, bottoms out, then the heavy spring kicks in. Once that thing is all the way up and bottomed out, then there's inside valving on the piston and there's also a gas accumulator behind here. This one's set a little softer, but there the piston, both springs bottom out, comes here, and the gas finally catches the truck. Hopefully we got a nice smooth landing, but that's how my shocks suspension system works. All right, just to wrap up our King shocks, which I agree is the best in the business, these things cost about 4,000 per corner. And that ain't bad, that's 16,000. But if you wreck one of these here, I didn't like, we were known for our reliability. So I carried a spare on hand of two corners. So I had an extra uh, set of shocks because these are interchangeable with the front. One thing you gotta remember is in your monster truck business and you wanna be reliable and get paid, that truck has to be at the starting line all the time. And through our 20 careers, we we're known for Mr. Reliability. And one thing I did on my semi truck that was a shop on wheels. I had my truck, every piece, besides this $180,000 that takes to build a truck, you gotta carry another $50,000 worth of parts, shocks. I had everything on that truck besides my motor in pieces, from a transmission, transfer case. I even carried a spare tire, spare axles, everything. This truck had to be on pieces in your trailer, ready to go, so you could keep that truck at the starting line. Now, to protect our $16,000 worth of shocks, there's limiting straps. These limiting straps are now, uh, when the truck is in the air, and to protect so these things don't pull out here, your limiting straps, you put set these about an inch and a half from full travel, so it'll stop the suspension system an inch and a half so this thing piston does not get yanked out of the barrel. So that's our limiting straps. We go with two just for safety, one breaks. So we always went with two of them. To keep the truck, one and last thing, uh, being that we're basically riding on air, on gas, this truck could easily uh, lean over one side to the other. So the thing you have here is a stabilizer bar. This stabilizer bar is hooked up with a spring-loaded shaft 
to your stabilizer arm, down to your links, to your axle. That's what keeps the truck level. Otherwise, it would lean to one side because of the, basically, it's an air ride with a gas accumulator. So, that wraps, uh, wraps up our shocks. Let's get into the drive line. All right, let's get into our drive line. What I did there is I wanted to keep as few parts on the truck as possible. So I always try to keep my four link bars the same length front and rear. So you want it to carry eight, you could only carry four. And also my drive line, uh, the front matches the back. So I got my drive line there. We got the drive line brake. We come up, we got the shaft that takes it to our SC. We decided to go SCS gearbox, the quick change gearbox. So goes from the drive line, front and rear, to our SCS gearbox. We can go in that gearbox and we can change the gearing by just pulling that front cover off to 30% underdrive, 20% underdrive, 10% underdrive, direct drive to 10% over, 20% over, and 30% over. So many a change you can do from a small hockey arena show to the big US Bank Stadium to your outdoor shows where you really gotta have some speed so you ain't redlining. So, from our transfer case, we decided to go, we used to have a 400 turbo, a Chevy turbo hydromatic in our first truck. Well, that one required a explosion blanket. So everything, monster trucks are extremely dangerous with the high horsepower, but they're extremely safe too. So our turbo 400, uh, just because uh, people are so close in them hockey arena venues that they need an explosion blanket. If the transmission exploded, the ring gear, anything flew apart, the blanket would catch it. Well, that blanket was always messy, full of oil. So when Cohen came out with the Power Glide and the explosion proof case, I immediately switched over. This is actually a real thick explosion proof case where you do not have to wear the transmission safety blanket. Nice and clean, two speed, bulletproof, made for 2,500 horsepower. That's why we elected to go with Cohen. And we also got uh, the, the Cohen uh, transmission. We actually got the cooler too with the fan and we just uh, got a simple cooler to cool the transmission oil. So, next thing in line, let's go to our power plant. All right, our power plant, we always stuck the Chevy. You can see this has not got a blower in it. I took a year or two off and we decided to sell our blower motor and we were gonna take on Thunder Acres and just have people drive this truck or ride in this truck. So I went to a 640 methanol burner without the blower, just naturally aspirated, just so the thing would last longer and it would be more driver friendly. So that's why we went to this here one, awesome piece. Speed up, fast forward. Uh, we're coming out of retirement. This engine's getting pulled after this video and we're building a brand new 540, 1500 horsepower blower motor, dyno tested by the best. That's going in here in the next month's time. So that's why you can see it doesn't have the blower. So we're waiting for our, we got to get this one up there. We trade it in, get a new one piece back. This thing's going to be ready to rock the house once again. Let's move on to steering. Obviously a monster truck has to have crab steering front and rear. If you only had, the early day trucks did not have the steering in the back and it took a heck of a, it took an acre to turn that truck around. This truck here will turn around on a dime because of front and rear steer. The front steering, you just got a pump on the back side of your motor, steers like a car pickup with the steering wheel on the front. Let me show you the back. The back end is electric over hydraulic. There's two positions. Uh, when I'm out there freestyling, I'll put an auto because there's so much to concentrate on in freestyle, you don't have to, time to worry about where your rear axles are. So you put in auto. Then I just have a pistol grip and when I want to make a right hand turn, I switch the switch over to the right. When I make my turn and come out of the turn, I let go of the switch, it automatically centers. That's the auto centering. Now for some instances, racing or something, going around a corner, you might want to put it on manual. And in racing, you don't want to really put the whole track, uh, truck to a full uh, steer in the back. Uh, you want more just a slight angle, maybe 10, 20 degrees to make the corner, let your front do it all, and then hit the auto steer coming out of the corner, it'll center itself. So let me show you how the auto steer works in the back. 
We'll hit the power. And I got two switches. First, I'll show you the manual steer. That's the manual steer. Left hand turn. Right hand turn. Back to center. When I flip my switch for freestyle, I go into my left hand turn. Let go of it, automatically recenters. Right hand turn, let go of it, automatically recenters. Awesome setup on a monster truck with the auto steer. All right, moving on. All right, just a little bit more about our rear steer. Obviously we need batteries. We went with a three battery design. Uh, I wanted my rear steer to be super fast so I didn't have to wait for it on freestyle. So we went with a three battery design. We share one battery and we go the rear steer on 24 volts. Then we go to the other one and go 12 volt to our starter. I kind of designed this three battery system. It's an awesome setup. Let me show you how it works. Going? Okay, I will draw it out so it's nice and easy for you. One battery plus minus. The middle shared battery plus minus. Third battery plus minus. Okay, starter, you want on 12 volt. Rear steer, we want on 24 volts. So, what we do first, obviously, we ground the minus. We take the plus to our 12 volt starter. We also take the plus of the second battery to our 12 volt starter and we ground. So now we got two batteries hooked in parallel going to our starter, 12 volts, does not change the volts, you just got plenty of amperage reserve. Now we're gonna take and share this here battery and we're gonna get 24. So we're gonna take and we're gonna ground our first battery. Then we're gonna take and hook it in series, what they call series. A lot of people are confused with this here. Parallel, you stay the same voltage. Series, you double the voltage. So, ground our battery, take our plus to our share battery and go to the minus. Then we go from the minus to plus, we pull off of here and we go to our 24 volt rear steer. So minus, ground, hooked in the series, plus to minus, take our plus, there's where we get 24. We took 12 and 12, 24 to our rear steer. And we still got plus, plus, minus, minus, 12 volt to our starter. It's confusing to a lot of people, but it's simple and it works. I convert a lot of drivers over to my system. Works awesome. Let's talk just a little bit about our driveline and our brake system. We have two sets of brakes. They're driveline brakes. There is no wheel brakes because they're just too bulky. Uh, driveline brakes are simple and do the job a lot better. So you can see my driveline brakes there, my rotor, and my caliper, and you can also see, so talking safety again, that is all wrapped. That drive shaft can spin 10,000 RPM. So that driveline ain't made to spin 10,000 RPM. So that's why you see our safety driveline loops front to rear to in case that drive line exploded or broke, that that would stay inside of that cage. So that is extremely nice safety piece on a 10,000 RPM drive shaft. Nikki, if you come up here, you can see my brake system better. You can see my 12 inch rotor and you can see my Wheelwood double piston caliper front and rear braking system works awesome. All right, we're up in the cockpit of Thunder 4x4. I would not pilot a monster truck today without a custom-made ISP seat and the Honda device. Them two things, you can have violent rollovers, and I have luckily, knock on wood, never had anything that I suffered the next day from just because of these, these two safety pieces. So, let's talk about our seat. We got a five point harness. We take our shoulders, bring them over, down to our belt, our other shoulder down to the belt. The bottom one, it all ties together. 
and then we have a ratcheting strap we can yank on these here once we're seated in once you're strapped into this baby you want to take the ratcheting strap you want to take these here and tug on them you do not want to move you want to be solid to this seat the tighter the better actually when i'm waiting in line to go you actually get numb because everything is so tight but that's how you want it trust me so let's talk about our hans device helmet this here also if you can see this seat was custom designed for me when i'm sitting up in here i got the side slap where i can't move and i also got with the hans device with these belts here no whiplash if you can't go your neck can't go forward back in the early day i had plenty of neck aches trust me until they came out with the hans device and this here saddle where you sit in now when you're in here in freestyle you got about a 25 degree window you have to turn the truck to see the track because about 25 degrees is all you can see out of there is no peripheral vision but awesome setup all right let's talk about how to pilot this bad boy first of all the steering wheel comes off like your racers do so you can get in and out easily pull back on and off what are steering and gear now i got my fuel supply cable and my electrical transmission reverse park first second then the rear steer this is how the rear steer works going to left hand turn i crank left i take my toggle switch left hand turn right hand turn put in auto hit this switch now i'm ready for freestyle left self-centering right self-centering awesome setup oil gauge water temperature one other thing killer radio they can shut me off at any time i got a left left lane center lane right lane so if i'm in the left hand uh racing lane my yellow light will come on if i'm in the right my right light will come on so that's when the official will know determine which truck to shut off one will be on red one will be on yellow they can shut us off at any time if we get out of control all right let's talk about fuel and what this power plant thrives on 22 gallon methanol tank 99.9 percent .9 methanol clear methanol is what we burn just to give you an idea how thirsty this thing is at idle if you bottle feed it it's like a water fountain at full throttle it's like a water hose and people ask me what kind of miles per gallon does this thing get trust me it ain't miles per gallon come over here once let's just say this thing takes six gallons per minute okay six gallons per minute times 60 minutes in an hour is 360. so we're taking 360 gallons per hour let's just say we're driving down the road for the hell of it divided by 55 miles an hour 6.54 not miles per gallon gallons per mile that's how thirsty this bad boy is speaking of going down the road to get this bad boy down the road you can't do it with the big tires on so what we got is what we call the transport tire we take our big wheel off we take our transport tire now you put that on it can get inside of our semi trailer plus we can get some of these venues are so small we got to tire up on the inside because we can't even get our 12 foot wide monster trucks through the 11 foot door of these hockey arenas so sometimes we got to do it inside all right going back to safety just for a second here just for a minute we got our custom-made seat five-point harness Hans device that I wouldn't be without then we have, like I said our killer radio where the official can shut us off at any time we also have the fire switch I got an onboard fire retardant system there's five nozzles all throughout the cab all I gotta do is pull this switch and there's a cab fire discharge put out the fire 
All right, continuing on safety on the outside of the truck, remember our driveline brakes, 10,000 RPM, they're all wrapped one end to the other. Another safety for the monster. These monster trucks are extremely dangerous. 1,500 horsepower, but with the right driver and crew, extremely safe as well. Let me show you in the rare case that, like I said, our spindles, I lost one tire. Tires come off the monster trucks a lot. This is not the current system, but it's what I used when I was there. I welded a disc onto my hub. Then we take this cable, we put it around this disc, put it in there, that gets attached to there with a clevis. If this spindle and this wheel all attached together, if that spindle breaks, what happens was it breaks and this thing chokes it, the clevis keeps it to the uh, truck, to the axle, and now this wheel stays with the truck with this axle instead of going flying off, bouncing into the crowd. So this choke system, but they have a new system coming where they're using the disc and they're using uh, two pieces of steel and they're kind of swashing that plate in there instead of the cable. It's all done with steel now to keep this axle or this broken off spindle instead of going into crowd bouncing at because we're at speeds of 50 miles an hour sometimes indoors. That tire is spinning and it can go into crowd. It stays with the uh, truck now with either the cable system or the flat steel keeping the disc to the axle. One other thing I wanted to point out. Maybe last, what are these here for? Tie down down the trailer? No, that actually is for if the truck tips over. We don't want to uh, hold up the show. We want the truck back on its wheels and off the things to keep the freestyle going or racing going. So if we roll over, the motor just hooks onto that there, puts us back over. The last probably five, six years, it used to be, if you rolled over, unhooked your belt, you got out. That is kind of a chore. When you're upside down, first thing you do is unhook your belt, you go right to the corner of the cab, and then you're like, head's jammed against the cab, you can't get out. Very tough to get out. You actually need help. So then they gave us the option of staying in the truck until we tip it back over. I chose to do that. Some drivers did not like the feeling of being upside down. They wanted out as quick as possible. I always chose, I'm staying in that truck, getting flopped over, much easier. We call this a Chevy. There ain't one Chevy thing on here, including the engine. It's all the best of the belt. Dart, Brodix, this. So there ain't any Chevy thing on here. But I'm a Chevy guy. So this truck weighs about 10,000 pounds and we make it look like a Chevy with this fiberglass shell. That's the only thing Chevy on it. But like I said, just to keep things lightweight, fiberglass easy to fix. That's why we chose fiberglass versus the early day trucks. Steel, hard to fix, fiberglass, lightweight, easy to work with. That's why it makes it look like a Chevy truck. That kind of wraps things up for the nuts and bolts of a monster truck and specifically Thunder 4x4. Uh, like I said, we got out of it for a year or two and if you look at my posts and stuff we're coming out of retirement in spring of 2024 we're working this winter on getting the big motor put back in the blower motor 1500 horsepower so we can rock the house come spring we got a lot of new exciting stuff in 2024 fox 9's coming out again we are going to jump my farmhouse with the brand new piece uh, they're coming out we're taking little thunder on the lake all kinds of exciting stuff for 2024 stay tuned we are now on instagram and TikTok, and check out our merchandise thunderacres.net still buy a piece of uh, clothing get a free tour of thunder acres we are out love y'all